Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. Today will be our last visit to one of the most exceptional rooms at Capital Audio Fest 2023. Of course, I'm talking about the Potomac Room, which is the annual home to the Audio Company of Marietta, Georgia, the Valve Amplification Company of Sarasota, Florida, and Von Schweikert Audio of Riverside, California. If you've been there, you've no doubt witnessed this exceptional exhibit space. If you've not had the pleasure of attending this show, you will find this enormous, engaging space after descending the sweeping staircase from the entrance and main floor of the hotel's lobby. Once you are on that lower level, you'll find it located just to your right, the southeast, and up a set of about half a flight of stairs. At that point, it opens into a very ample space surrounded by a large, chest-high wall. This large, sweeping space just outside the uh, entrance to the Potomac Room itself is set up to provide active video displays, meeting and productivity spaces, comfortable seating, and relaxation space for attendees, and is filled with a large number of static displays for a myriad of Valve Amplification Company and Von Schweikert Audio products. This all makes for a very welcoming experience before you enter the Potomac Room itself, just behind its glass walls and double glass doors. The room itself is one enormous space and is without question the foremost exhibit location available at the Hilton Washington DC Rockville Hotel and Executive Meeting Center. Although the hotel's webpage listed it as 50 feet by 50 feet at something like 11 feet in height, it measures more like 60 by 65 feet and the 11 foot height is based on the suspended ceiling mounted below a vaulted ceiling that angles upward from the center of the hotel to its exterior wall. As you may imagine, with those dimensions, the volume of the space in the Potomac Room is enormous, which as well as being the most prominent and exciting locations available at this annual show, also makes it one of the most daunting challenges in which to deliver great sound. We'll get into that soon enough. First, let's take a look at the entire system set up this year by these partners. We will hear from Gordon Waters of The Audio Company, Kevin Hayes of VAC, and Leif Swanson of Von Schweikert Audio. Next, we'll get to hear some playback from a few songs which will give you just a small taste of the sonic magic that this system pulled off. Let's take a listen. Hi, I'm Gordon Waters from The Audio Company. Uh, we're here with Kevin Hayes from VAC in the Potomac Room at Capital Audio Fest. Uh, I'm here to show you what the front end of the system looks like. We start with, for analog duty, we have the Transrotor Rondino turntable with a TR509 tone arm. Cartridge is the extraordinarily good Airtight PC1 Supreme. For digital duties, we start out with the R-Ender uh, W20SE, accompanied by the brand new R-Ender MC10 clock assembly. This is a brand new model, just came out. We we're happy to, to get one of those in. Uh, the R-Enders then feed the digital signal into the esoteric N01XD, which we're using as a DAC. Uh, it is basically doing all the transfers from the from the Orange streamer. In addition, we also have an esoteric K01 CD player that is doing all of around disc duties. So that's basically the front end. We're feeding everything into Kevin's equipment here. And depending upon the source, it comes in the system in a different way. For the phono playback, we have the statement phono stage, which uh, is a, a fairly well-known piece these days, probably one of the finest things we have ever designed and had the privilege of making. It has four inputs, balanced or single-ended. Um, it has variable gain settings, three of them, variable loading, mono features, and the entire audio circuit is mounted to a large slab of machined brass, which is decoupled from the outside world, meaning you just don't hear any microphony from it when you hammer on it, which is a great feature for audio purity. And that clown Greg Weaver said it was uh, phono stage of the decade from 2011 to 2020. Greg Weaver is a man that knows his stuff. Remember that. The, the phono stage's output or the digital out sources come into the statement line stage, which is, again, a cost-no-object tour de force in our product line. 
all the way from its custom-made RK40 Alps volume control, which we motorize for remote function, to just obsessive shielding and, and layout. Um, circuit routing is done in a way which naturally keeps noisy things away from sensitive things, which you would like to do. And the various magnetic parts of the circuit are in enclosures which are shielded from a sandwich of aluminum, copper, nickel, and chrome, which pretty much covers the audio spectrum and keeps everything pure. Stray stuff does not get through the system, but what you want to get from stage to stage gets through that system. It's inherently fully balanced. Transformer coupled input, transformer coupled output, step down type output transformers are really almost more like a small class A power amp. We've even had some of the people in our laboratory plug headphones directly into the output of the preamp and it works them fine. So that's the, uh, that's the front end configuration for the show. Hi, I'm Leif Swanson from Von Schmeichert Audio and... I'm Kevin Hayes from Valve Amplification Company, also known as VAC. And we're, we're here at Capital Audio Fest 2023 and uh, we were going to show you the system that we're displaying here. It's, it's kind of a unique year. Normally we come here with quarter million dollar speakers and hundred thousand dollar amplifiers. And this year we thought it would be fun to bring speakers that are about one tenth the price, amplifiers that are only about twenty two thousand dollars and show what we can do with this beautiful Potomac room with equipment that is more attainable, more aspirational, and it is really terrific. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, this is some of the best sound we've had. Yeah. What are you trying to say? I'll tell you that all of your products are excellent. Oh, and and yours are, too. And mine are pretty good too. I'm his biggest fan. So, okay. So we have here we have the Endeavor Special Edition. There's two models of the Endeavor Special Edition. One is in the high gloss paint finish, and then one is offered in the veneer finish. There's a substantial price difference between the two because of the time it takes to put the automotive finish on. But we're looking at basically a three-way speaker here with brilliant tweeters and um, this. Uh, came from the Endeavor E3 speaker, the original one, and this speaker was designed after a few of the Ultra flagships were designed, so it inherited just about all the trickle-down technology it could take. Um, it's uh, set up for bywire, and of course, uh, it's got the rear ambient retrieval, which is the air acoustic inverse replication, which is great for simulating the size of the room. We have a huge sound stage here, but not unrealistic. It's Voices aren't too big, they're not oversized or anything. And, and then we also have the custom design critical mass LS footers um, that we uh, recommend on all our speakers, but they're fantastic. But uh, we're using master belt cabling all throughout. Uh, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin. Well, for this show, this is the both the US and the world debut of our, now, our new signature 202 power amplifiers, which are these guys right here. You can uh, access the tubes directly through the new hinged cover, which is a, a very convenient feature if you've ever had to fiddle with screwdrivers or snap it off cages and so forth. These are all new amplifiers. They really are not derivative of the older Signature 200s. They are directly inspired by the circuitry, the parts, the techniques that were first developed for the Statement 452 amplifiers, which debuted here in 2019. Um, that then led to the Master 300s, which were shown here last year, and now ultimately the Signature 202s. And the family sound is so close to the entire range, whether it's the $75,000 statement or the $23,000 signature, they all have the same DNA. It's the sort of, the sort of yeah. winsome character. They just kind of breathe the music into the room. Detail is way up. Bass control is fantastic. They also feature our patented IQ Continuous Automatic Bias System which keeps the underlying idle point of the tube consistent and steady through all kinds of music. So the drift, the bias never drifts up or drifts down with volume, and it uh, lowers noise, lowers distortions, prolonged tube life, tells you when to change a tube. Um, these are designed as 100 watts per channel stereo mode, or by switch, 200 watts monoblock. They also are switch, switch selectable between a fully balanced mode or a single entity input mode. When they're in the balance mode, they are completely balanced from input terminals to outputs and everything in between. And uh, they just came out looking awful nice, I thought. That they're beautiful. Uh, we're, running, we're running here in their mono mode by amplifying these, uh, these Endeavor SEs. We don't need four amplifiers, but when Kevin comes, he really 
Well, someone's going to come bringing Russian techno dance EDM and try to play at 110 dB. You never want to be short of cubic inches. You could start so, with one of these in stereo mode and, and run our speakers, and it'd be great. But uh, And then expand, expand. if you want to, two of them running by amplify in the stereo mode or mm -hmm. any other configuration you might want. Yeah. Okay. experience we showgoers get to enjoy year after year in this amazing space. But this year, as Kevin and Leif alluded to during their discussions introducing us to their products and setup, 
This year saw them take several very bold and successful steps. As well as giving us the world premiere of the new Valve Amplification Company's latest addition to their signature product series, the Signature 202 IQ Power Amplifiers, they also used four of them in mono configuration to buy amplify a pair of the Von Schweikert Audio Endeavor Special Edition loudspeakers. Why should this be seen as such a bold move? These partners typically use one of the flagship Ultra models from VSA to anchor this monstrously sized room. Products that carry retails of between $180,000 and $350,000. The Endeavor Special Editions sell for just $27,000, or about 8% the cost of their most expensive model. By the way, the entire system, including its pricing, may be found in today's description section. Not only that, but VAC traditionally uses amplifiers from their statement lineup, some costing as much as $75,000 each. And they use four of them to buy Amplify. In fact, in years past, this show has often been the chosen location to introduce new amplifiers to the public. Having shown their original Statement 450 IQ monoblocks in the earlier days, and then introducing the Statement 452 IQ music block monos in 2019, their Signature 200 IQ monos in 2022, and this year introducing us to the stunning 2002 IQ signature amplifiers at $22,000 each, or just under 30% of the cost of their flagship amplifiers. Highlighting what this considerably smaller and much more affordable Von Schweiker Audio Endeavor Special Edition loudspeaker could pull off when driven with an equally more affordable amplifier from the Valve Amplification Company, demonstrates just how much of each company's sonic DNA that they are able to realize so effectively at these drastically lower price points. Given the size of the room, these partners also used a pair of the new Von Schweikert Audio Shockwave 12 subwoofers for active room correction, just as they and many other exhibitors have done in past presentations. During my curated After Hours LP session held in the Potomac Room Saturday night, the question of the use of these subs came up. Both Damon Von Schweiker and I discussed the principles of the acoustics of node and room resonance management in sound reinforcement application. Such multi-woofer applications reduce standing waves through destructive interference and produce the most linear and consistent frequency response for all locations in the room. Many in attendance were unaware of this and that this is a commonly used solution in high performance audio, one that was first really pioneered and popularized in the early days of the home theater movement, but now has been applied widely by many excellent two-channel audio companies. If you know what you are doing, additional subwoofers can be used to reduce room resonance, allowing for the improved overall quality of bass throughout the entire room. The thing to understand is that it's not about adding more bass. It's about distributing it much more effectively and evenly throughout the whole room. Regardless, when fronted with the famous million dollar sources and electronics, featuring the world premiere of the VAC Signature 202 IQ amplifiers and these supremely overachieving and slight loudspeakers, the resultant sonic tapestry this system rendered managed to astound the crowds that came to listen. Honestly, it was no small feat. Many of the attendees to Saturday Night's After Hours LP session are regulars, um, showgoers or industry professionals who try to attend all my sessions. The response to this system's ability to get out of its own way and just reveal the music very much as they had all come to expect from the flagship product's performance, was one of both surprise and, to some degree, awe. This system soared. Yes, there were slight concessions made to scaling, dynamic expressiveness, and extension at both extremes, given the smaller number and dimension of the drivers in play with the ESEs. But regarding tonal characteristics, spatiality, dimensional texture, bloom, and body, this system just made music and managed to more than merely impress everyone who heard it that I spoke with.
Though measuring just three feet, eight inches tall by nine inches wide and 15 inches deep, when implemented with a pair of the Shockwave 12 subs used for active room correction to allow the ESE's true voice to be heard throughout the room, they had no business filling this massive space so remarkably well. I have to commend these partners for their daring initiative to show just how great a performance can be accomplished with any of their products, given the proper care, attention to detail, and setup. Bravo! As always, thanks for taking the time to drop by today. Further information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or on my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Don't forget to subscribe, click that notification button, and share links to your favorite episodes with your friends on social media. Till next time, please stay safe and keep the music playing. Cheers.